understand and understand thought patterns the way people think. And you will start seeing them same thought patterns today. All right? Now, what we have here, this son, which was born, right? Mm -hmm. And he let them know, since you refused the waters of Shiloh, but you continue to seek after the foreigners and paganism, verse 7. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord bringeth up upon them the waters of the river, strong and many, even the king of Assyria, and all his glory. And he shall go, he shall come up over all his channels and go over all his banks. Notice what he's saying. I'm going to bring over the king of Assyria. He shall overflow over. He described him as a bee in chapter 7. No. Now he's described him as a mighty water. As a river. As a river. Go ahead. And he shall pass through Judah. He shall overflow and go over. He shall reach even to the neck and the stretching out of his wing shall fill the breath of the land of Emmanuel. Oh, the land of Emmanuel, where the God, where the sign of the Creator is. Mm -hmm. You notice what he said. What's really interesting about this prophecy is that you know how he said he shall overflow and reach even to the neck. Mm -hmm. Jerusalem. You know Josephus. This I'm just gonna add this one in here. It's really interesting to me. Josephus described the city of Jerusalem. <laughs> excuse me. How it was elevated up on a hill. He described it as the head of Judah. It was like really like the head on a body. So what he's saying, and remember, the idea was that nothing was Assyria, Syria, no one was going to take Judah as far as the land or the capital. Jerusalem. But he didn't say nothing about all of the plains of Judah. So he said the water shall go all through the plains of Judah, all the way to the neck. He's giving that visual description of how the water going to rise, but it's not going to overcome Jerusalem, the head, which is at the top. It's going to come up to the neck, but it's not going to take the capital. That's exactly what happened. Assyria came in. They assaulted Judah. They took many captives in Judah, but they did not overcome the capital, Jerusalem. This prophecy in which Isaiah gave, we've seen that resin fell, peacock fell, Assyria came and, uh, and, and overcame Judah, took some captives, overcame the ten tribes and Syria, and we found that a son was born, didn't we? By who? The prophetess. Now, am I going to read this and say something wrong with the New Testament? Some people are, do do that, don't they? Mm -hmm. Now, what is our task? Was well, to find out the language of the New Testament. Well, what was Matthew trying to portray? Who was going on? And we won't stop there either. We're going to look at some other stuff that took place in the New Testament. Can we go to Matthew now? Because we're going to find the same record in Matthew of a virgin bringing forth. And you know something else that people leave out. People think that all of the prophets just stopped at Malachi. Now that was the prophets, that's where the prophecy stopped as far as writing down the scripture. But there were still prophets. When the prophets who prophesied that they're going to try to stone Paul in Jerusalem if he went up there? Mm -hmm. It was still prophets all over the place. Wasn't, who was the who was brother Simeon, wasn't he? When he said that the Lord told him he shall not die till he see his salvation. He was a prophet. He understood. So even when you say the prophecy, you don't know what prophet was doing what in that day. They say spoken by the prophet. What prophet? All right, now we're giving a description of Isaiah, but it, it isn't necessarily the same that he was just totally getting it from Isaiah. He could have received it from a prophet who used the same terminology. And I'm gonna show you what I mean, who, took, who read Isaiah. And it was a point they wanted to bring out in that chapter. Not that they were saying this, that chapter in chapter 7 of Isaiah was referring to the Mashiach. Isaiah never said it was, did he? Now let's see if Matthew actually said it was. Let's go to Matthew chapter 1 and let's start reading, if you will, brother, at verse 18. Matthew 1 and 18. Let's see if Matthew saying that that chapter 7 in Isaiah was referring to the Messiah. Now the birth of Jesus was on this wise when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together 
she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. See, and we don't believe at all that Joseph lay with Mary. We can show you through other teachings and other studies that look, Joseph lineage was done from coming from Solomon after Zedekiah and his brothers messed up. Mm -hmm. The seed royal switch from Zedekiah, Je Jehoiakim, and Jehoiakim, it switched from them and it went to Nathan. All right? So, uh, Joseph didn't want to make her a public example. If you read the Torah, you'll find out the whole ordeal they had to go through when you accused a woman in Israel of cheating. All right? The judges and everybody had to be brought into the thing, so he didn't want to go through all of that for such and such reasons. However, that's not our subject today. Let's continue to read and find out what Matthew is bringing out here. Go ahead. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. Uh-huh. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Go ahead, brother. And she shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now he's giving you the record of what they literally going to call his name. Pay attention to this. This is they literally going to call him. Go ahead. Now all this is done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying. And when you're using the term all this was done, you're simply going along the same lines on how the Most High creates situations. How he causes things to come to pass. All right? Uh, with the with the proverbs say that you know you may uh, 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 devise your own way, but the course you take is from the Lord. Mm -hmm. See, all is taking place from the Most High, and so He said, "All this might be done, that it might be fulfilled." Read verse twenty-two again. Pay attention to the wording. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, "Behold, a virgin shall be with child." and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Now did he say all this was done to fulfill Isaiah chapter 7? No. What part did he say was being fulfilled? Just the part where he said about the virgin. Virgin? And being and, born. And God is with us. Because we found out that that child who was born in the days of Isaiah, name wasn't Emmanuel either. Mm -hmm. What was his name? Yeah. Who could say it? Come on, Nishan. You know his name? Say it again, huh? Mahar Shala Hashbaz. Mahar He wasn't called Emmanuel, was he? What was the point in that verse of that sign? The sign of the child was what? God being with you. This is the sign that he's with you. Now tell me, when the Mashiach was born, was that fulfilled? The sign that God is with us. Not the whole chapter. No. The sign that was pointed out. And I'm going to show you the word fulfilled shortly. What do you mean? The sign that God is with us. Look. That's what he said. It interpreted as, right? Now, let's go to John. First John. I'm sorry. St. John chapter 1. St. John chapter 1. St. John chapter 1. made reference to Isaiah when Isaiah brought out the point of a child being born and God is with us. He never said or made reference that that chapter 7 right. was talking about the sign that Ahaz being a Messiah. He simply pointed out those verses which he said was fulfilled. Now we're going to learn what fulfilled means because we learned fulfilled got marked to the meaning. One fulfilled means to begin. Another fulfilled means to be completed. Then you got another fulfilled that means it can have like about five different definitions that words are interpreted fulfilled. And one definition of fulfilled means to coincide. Did you know that? To coincide. This coincides with what? Isaiah said by the mouth, what the Lord spoke by Isaiah. God is with us. A, a virgin shall conceive. See, when we read the word fulfilled, 
Sometimes they give us, be good to, to look the word up. And we will. But first, why in the world would this be fulfilled? God is with us. Because that was the whole hype behind the birth of this son. Not that this son was the sign of Ahaz. Matthew didn't bring that out. He brought this out. St. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Uh -huh. The same was in the beginning with God. Go ahead. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Go ahead. And Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent... Now, we won't deal with John. He was the light, the Word. This light was the Word, which was with God and was God, he called it. Verse 9. Verse 9. Uh-huh. That was the true light, which lightened every man that cometh into the world. Uh-huh. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. In verse 14, And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. What was the word called? Verse 1. The word was called, was God. Read it, verse 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Now in verse 14. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. And what did the name Emmanuel mean? God is with us. Matthew pointed that out of Isaiah. That particular part of that chapter to show this coincides with the sign of God being with Jacob, just like that son was a sign to Ahaz, that God was with them. This birth of this son was the exact same sign. It, was, it correlated the exact same way. He was born, God manifesting the flesh, being among men, and he was there to do what? Deliver who? The house of Jacob to show that the house of David will not be spoiled, but a redeemer shall come in. Right. Well, brother, you said coincide, but the Bible said fulfill. Yeah, it did. That's exactly what it said. Can somebody now, what I want, I'm going to my records here. And we want fulfilled, I wrote it down on this piece of paper, if I'm not mistaken. 41? Forty-one thirty-seven. 4137 in the Greek. 4137. 4137. Just one second. Make sure I'm looking up the same word. Just read everything underlined for time. Because it can mean complete, it can mean all of those things. But here in this context, we wasn't necessarily talking about a completion of anything. Read that. Fulfilled. This is the word fulfilled that was used in this text. Play a rule. Uh-huh. To make replete. To make replete. To level up. Uh-huh. To level up to. Or to coincide with the prediction. Or to what? To coincide with with the prediction. And we're going to show you this is an accurate interpretation of it. To coincide with a prediction. See, I can't say that Peter and them read Isaiah 7 before, or, or should I say, Simeon read Isaiah 7 and looked for a virgin to bring forth a child. I can't say Joseph did the same thing because when you read that chapter, you're going to read about the sign of Ahab. But what I can say when this terminology or this type of fulfillment is used is always that I have found it being used in a past tense.